Time to run some nets. On the right, there's me playing the Corporation Whalen Consortium because we built it. On the left, the runner, Anarch, Noise, Hacker Extraordinaire. Turn one, score the hostile takeover. If I leave that in my hand, he could just come in and steal it. Kind of worried about that, so I wanted to get it out of my hand. I think I only had enough ice to protect one server. So I would have had to protect R&D in case of a medium. I guess I was still vulnerable to medium, but I got super lucky. The biggest luck in the universe. A snare on top of the deck at the beginning of the game. Really, you couldn't put a snare anywhere better than that. Right? If you knew that was there, you would never ice R&D. The runner almost always would run R&D on the first click. I only had two snares in my deck for one of them to be in the perfect position. Uh, you really couldn't ask for more than that. So already I'm off to a great start. Uh, now I'm going to ice up R&D. Using my own... I think the, one of the only ice I have. I think that other ice that I thought about installing was an archer. I didn't really want to actually install that. Because it would give it away that it's an archer if you ran it and I couldn't res. So I installed the ice and use a hedge fund. I think I actually used a double hedge fund. He's already declared he's running R&D. I spend a credit and res that ice wall. Got an advancing ice now. I can start using my ability. Uh, I really want to get advancing ice as early in the game as possible to start using uh, my recurring credit to get the commercializations powered up. So he runs R&D. He bounces off the ice wall, takes some credits. My go. It's actually kind of nice that he's not interested in HQ, but at the same time, uh, I don't really have any agendas in HQ, otherwise I would protect it. But then again, I would be telegraphing by putting an ice there that I had agendas in my hand. And I would much rather put the ice uh, in front of the archives before he starts milling cards. As soon as he installs viruses, he's going to run that same turn, and he'll have some good chance of stealing agendas with the noise identity ability of card milling. So I w you always want to install a card on the archives before noise can install viruses. See? There he goes with the viruses. I was right on time. A turn later, see? He milled a card down. And I'm going to lose my ice wall, though, which is pretty rough, because number one, R&D will be unprotected. And number two, you know, the only advancing ice I have right now to boost up for commercialization will go away. And I've already spent a click to advance it, so that was a click wasted. It actually only bought me a turn um, of protecting R&D, that token. Because he has the Grimoire, he got a virus token to start out with. So, since he has no icebreakers, uh, but he is going to get into R&D, I'm going to try to score an agenda over on the side in a server he can't get into uh, while he is running R&D. So, luckily, he doesn't see anything good. He does try to run to, to prove, make me prove he can't get in there. And I have an Enigma, which is awesome. A lot of people underestimate Enigma. I know Yogg walks right through it. It's not particularly expensive if the other guy has Gordian Blades and such. But early in the game, it's cheap to res, and it makes the runner lose a click, which is incredibly valuable. I mean, look, it just scored me this agenda. Right? The reason I'm thinking really hard about scoring this agenda is because it's a posted bounty. That's why I advanced it once. Uh, because that allows me to advance it twice and score it and still have a click left to do something while the runner is tagged. Right? So what could I do to him while he's tagged? Well, he doesn't have any resources. But I do have a Scorched Earth right, in my hand. I can't win the game with that. A lot of people won't play a Scorched Earth unless it wins them the game. Uh, but I choose to do it anyway because he is losing his entire hand, all four cards. Uh, I got super lucky again. There were two magnum opuses in those four cards. If you trash influence cards with damage, anything the runner spent influence on gets damaged away. That is super good. Right. So, you know, in order to do this, I had to leave R&D unprotected. 
right? He got a Project Atlas scoring two points. So, you know, the question here is, was it worth it? I basically sacrificed an agenda point to make him lose all the cards in his hand. You know, would you do that? If there was a card that said, pay one agenda point and forfeit one point, make the corporation discard their whole hand, make the runner discard their whole hand, would you do it? I did it, and I ended up uh, letting him score two points. So, you decide if that was a good idea or not. I was thinking just to slow him down, to give myself a chance to, you know, take an extra turn or two to draw and install some ice. See, he spent a whole turn drawing his hand back up. Which gives me a whole turn to catch up. I've got a new ice in front of R&D. I've advanced it. I've taken some credits. See, he spends another turn drawing cards and taking credits. So it was spend an agenda point to get two turns to uh, catch up in this game. He still really doesn't have anything installed besides that grimoire. But here comes the djinn. So now I'm getting, you know, all right, he can start pick, picking up viruses out of our, uh, his uh, stack and milling me down. He had too many cards in his hand and discarded a mimic. I guess he figures mimic isn't going to be very worthwhile in this game. It's not going to help him with archer unless he gets data sucker tokens. You know, it's not going to help him with a you know, a highly advanced shadow. Alright. I put another ice down on that server in preparation for scoring some agendas back there. He's still ignoring HQ, mostly. I don't think he's run there. Maybe he hasn't run there yet. So I ice up archives even more, because he could always um, run there, use Jin to go get a parasite and get in. And that would mill a card on the way in. I really have to counteract that noise ability uh, before my deck just gets dumped into the archives. So here comes an ice carver, see? So that's even worse. Um, the ice carver really helps speed the parasites up a whole bunch. Uh, he can basically run at an ice that's brought down to strength one and use the ice carver will take that final strength away as he's running in knock the ice off the table Okay, so I installed a card in that server. That card is actually a snare. I didn't install it there hoping to trap him with it. Uh, I didn't think he could even run there. The reason I put it there is so that on the next turn, I would put an upgrade in there, and the snare would protect the upgrade. So if he tried to run in and, you know, trash my upgrade, he would pay for it. But actually, he pretty cleverly uh, went and got a parasite, put it on the only ice he's allowed to put a parasite on, the only resed ice, the Enigma. And he took a run at it. <clears throat> so I know that front card is Archer, so I'm not going to res that. I'm not going to pay a point to trash two programs when the only program on the table is a Jin. when the alternative is to let him take three net damage and a tag right, for four credits. So I get rid of a whole bunch of icebreakers. That's pretty terrific. Right. Again, I was super lucky to have that snare so early. 
And also to have him run it. I, I honestly wasn't expecting him to run that. I was planning to leave that snare there and then to replace it with an agenda when I finally uh, drew one. So really, just everything is going my way in this game. But even though everything's going my way, the score is still 2-1. to one. So I commercialize and I rebuild my giant mountain of money. Okay, so I put an upgrade and an agenda in that server. The agenda, I believe, is a posted bounty. Now he runs the server, so the only thing in front of it is the archer. So if I let him take that point, the score will be 3 to 1. Instead, I trash a point to res the archer. I get slightly ahead because I've trashed his gin, and then I'm able to score my one point. So I trashed a point and gained a point, but in the end, the score is two to one. If I would have let him steal it and kept my point, the score would have been three to one. So that's, you know, and the fact that I also trashed the gin <clears throat> made it worthwhile. It's sort of like, you know, spend four credits to trash a gin. It's like, yeah, I'll do that. I also gain two of the credits back. So it's actually spend two credits to trash gin, and, you know, you lose a point and you gain a point, so I break even in that regard. This time I do not use the posted bounty to tag him. What am I going to do with that tag? Trash the ice carver? You know, I couldn't scorch him to death. There's only two scorches left. I actually think one of the scorches might have been milled off with, a, with one of those viruses. <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, here comes even more virus installing. Data sucker time. So now I'm feeling sorry that I blocked up HQ. Right? Because he installed the data sucker. It gets a token automatically from Grimoire. HQ is wide open. He hasn't been running it all game, which I think now was intentional, right? So that he would still have a place to go to fill up the data suckers when he eventually got them. So the thing is, he didn't run the data sucker immediately upon installing it. I see it there now, so I can ice up that HQ right, to keep him out. There I go. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm not going to let him easily fill up those data suckers. Uh, if he gets a Mimic or a Fem, he can use them to chop down Archer, which is the only way I can score agendas at this point. And I'm still down 2-1. to one. So I put a Shadow there. It was the only ice I had. He lets me get two credits. We're doing a trace for a tag right now. A tag, again, wouldn't be that valuable to me at this point. So I just let him pay. You know, he has the two bad publicity. He uses those and one credit to break that trace. Not to beat the trace. Accesses HQ, gets a data sucker token. You know, the shadow isn't going to keep him out. It's not going to prevent him from uh, getting data sucker tokens, but it is going to at least give me credits and such in return, and also a possible tag. Uh, so if he does it too much, I'll have a huge, even bigger pile of credits than I normally do. I'll be able to win some of those tag traces. He gets a second data sucker. I have to mill another card off R&D. So since he doesn't have icebreakers out, right, this is my chance to try to score. Right? Sure, he has data suckers and the ice carver. So the archer is at strength uh, 5. 
he could run HQ once to get five tokens, but he, he just doesn't have an icebreaker. And he doesn't really, I don't think, have enough credits to install uh, one. And I saw a lot of mimics get trashed. So yeah, see, he, he think he's just going to let me score this one, realizing he can't do anything. The reason I advanced it twice, as opposed to installing it blank, is because uh, it is a Project Atlas. Right. I know I'm sort of telegraphing to the runner what agendas are what by the way I advance them. But that's okay, because I have two Atlas counters now. His corroder could help him if there's an ice wall, but I'm pretty sure the only ice wall is that giant one in front of R&D. That might actually be a shadow. I don't think I got res the entire game. Uh, and I forget what it was. So now the score is me three, him two. If I can get to five points, I will win the game in two turns because I can use the two Atlas tokens to go and get two hostile takeovers and win the game. But I need to get those two more points from somewhere uh, before I can use those Atlas tokens. I could also try to use the Atlas tokens for some Scorched Earth type activities. But I think actually I have a sea source and a Scorched Earth in my hand. Um, so really, I need him to make a successful run while his economy is way down and his cards are low. I remember checking for that opportunity pretty much every turn. He had enough cards in his hand. I wasn't about to, uh, you know, spend a whole ton of credits to do just one Scorch again. I had to save them for the possibility of the win. I'm only ahead by one point. Okay, so I put another ice in front of the archer and put an agenda in there and advance it once. See, I'm thinking this is the time. He doesn't have a sentry breaker. Right, I have to push these agendas through uh, right now. In a couple more turns, he's probably going to have sentry breaking capabilities. I'm not going to be able to score anymore. I'll have to do something else. He uses his huge pile of credits to install the Femme Fatale. Now you would think normally put that token on Archer, right? But instead he does something clever, which I didn't think of. See, I'm like, hey, you put it on Archer? He says, no, I'm putting it on Shadow. The reason he did this is because he has two bad publicity. Shadow has two subroutines. Bad publicity give you credits every run. not once. They're not recurring credits, they're every run credits. So now HQ is effectively 100% wide open. He can run HQ for free, well, for a click, and get two Data Sucker tokens. So now Archer is not scary because Femme is also a Sentry Breaker, right? So he runs HQ for free, gets Data Sucker tokens. Now he can run at Archer and break it using the Sentry tokens and the Ice Carver and the Femme Fatale. See, I didn't actually learn this game, right, that the uh, posted bounty gives them a bad publicity. I was like, you have two? He's, that's why I was checking those agendas. I thought he would only have one from Hostile Takeover. But posted bounty does give a bad publicity. I learned my lesson. Speaking of posted bounty, I scored another one. I do not use it to tag. What would I do with that tag? Right, trash his ice carver or his liberated accounts? That's not worth it. That's not worth an agenda point. Spend a point to trash an ice carver? No. So he stalls Imp, the card I probably, I hate that card a lot. He has free run on HQ, 
right, as I said before. So now he can trash cards out of my hand, even if they normally can't be trashed. The only saving grace is that Imp can be used once per turn. He's checking on HQ to see if there's anything else he might want to run and trash in future turns, and also to fill up his data cycler tokens for when I eventually put an agenda in the remote server. So I ice up HQ a little bit more to try to scare him away. You'll notice he did trash my Scorched Earth there. So now really, two or three Scorched Earths are, you know, in the trash there. Uh, I think, yeah, I do think the third one got milled. So the possibility of winning that way is unlikely, if not zero. Now I really have to win by scoring. The score is four to two. If I can score just one more point, uh, you know, in, in any way that's not a hostile takeover, I can use the Atlas tokens to get two more hostile takeovers and win in two turns. But three posted bounties have been scored. Two Atlases are on the table. The only agendas left, I believe, are government contracts, which I think is in the archives. Uh, one more Atlas, two more hostile takeovers. I don't think there might be there might be a second government contracts in the deck. There's not a lot of agendas left, right? So it's a lot harder for me to score them at this point than it is for him to steal them. Uh, and he can't steal them from R&D, really, but he can steal them from HQ. And with all those data sucker tokens, he can steal them from the remote server. So don't be fooled by that score. So yeah, there he goes. He uses an imp to trash my closed accounts, which I didn't really need. Because uh, even if I managed to tag him somehow uh, in this game, uh, he closed accounts. He doesn't have a lot of credits. It's not worth going through all the effort to tag him. Uh, to get rid of his measly number of credits. You know, his power is data sucker tokens, which I can clear by clearing virus counters. So he does run my hand and get rid of a hostile takeover that I just drew, which sucks. But then I drew another one immediately. So we got one each. I just scored it out of hand. Uh, so now the score is actually five to three in my favor, but I can't use my two remaining... Uh, Atlas counters to go and get two hostile takeovers and win because all of them are on the table. There's none left. All three of them are out. So if I use those Atlas counters to win, I'm going to need to use them to get a two-point agenda to win. So here I'm considering clearing the virus counters. There's a lot of them out there. But HQ is still wide open. And I think the other ice in front of HQ is Archer. So I don't really want to res that. I need points. Right? So I take a big ballsy move. I use the Atlas counter. And I go and I get a private security force. One of the only remaining agendas. It's worth two points. Right? He knows, you know, he's run HQ a lot. He knows what's in my hand. He knows that that's pretty much the only card I've got. There's no bluffing going on here, right? I'm just going to put that private security force right in that remote server and say, yes, I will win this game next turn unless you steal this. And the other reason I can do this move is because I have five. If I score it, I win. He has three. If he scores it, he does not win immediately. So if he steals it, I'm not going to be super upset. Right? It's not game over. But if I score it, I win. So this is, this is a good play for me. I also know that I have a corporate troubleshooter there. That's the upgrade. And I have a huge pile of credits from commercializing. And I counted his data sucker tokens before doing this. And that's the other reason I didn't clear them. If I cleared them, he could have run HQ a bunch and refilled them. Right? By not clearing them, I'm forcing him to use them now. I didn't really think about him going, running HQ, and getting two more, uh, so that's why I have to recount. So I don't res the first ice to save some credits. He hits Archer. I use the Troubleshooter. He sort of expected it. All right Now I have to recount, because he got some more tokens. And there's an Ice Carver. 
And he also has some bad publicity and some credits on noise. And the femme has two base strength. Right, so there's a lot of math here. The strength of Archer is 6. Actually, it's 5 because of Ice Carver. Fem is already at 2, so he needs 3 Data Sucker tokens. 1, 2, 3 to meet the Archer. He's got to have to spend a number of credits equal to his remaining tokens, plus 1, in order to beat those. Right? Then I need to spend credits you know, for every 2 he has uh, in the back, because it costs two to boost the strength of Fem. Then I need to spend one credit on top of that so he doesn't meet the strength. I ha he has to, you know, my the strength of the ice has to beat his strength. And of course, I subtract some credits that he would need to actually use to break the subroutines. So I actually put in some insurance credits there and kept just enough to protect, uh, you know, to res little tiny ice elsewhere. So Archer goes off, and I get to trash two programs. Had to decide which ones to trash. I thought about getting rid of both data suckers, but instead I chose one data sucker and the fem. This way, there is zero chance of a rerun. Right? He still had some clicks left. He could have run HQ again. See, because he didn't break the Archer, he didn't spend any data sucker tokens. Now the strength from the pers the the corporate troubleshooter lasts the rest of the turn. So a rerun was not very likely. It may have been impossible, actually. But uh, by trashing the data sucker and the fam, I guaranteed basically no rerun on that server. He would have to score four points on some other server somehow in order to win this game. I am going to win by scoring that. So he does the smart move, last-ditch effort, run archives. Uh, there's pretty much there's a good chance of four points being in there. But I res on Enigma, and he does not have a code gate breaker of any kind, so that is game over. Uh, there actually was a government contracts uh, in that archives, which would have brought him up to six, but not seven. And I scored my private security force seven points. GG.